Hello, everyone. Today, I'd like to discuss the bailout method for the various intravascular technical issues that could happen during the endovascular coiling of cerebral aneurysms. Currently, though we have and we are using much better devices and advanced technologies for the endovascular treatment of cerebral aneurysms, Still, we are not wholly free from the complications. That is why we still need to discuss about this issue and uh, discuss how to avoid or mitigate these complications. I found the term bailout is used as nouns and verb forms, and the term was exactly the one we need to use occasionally during our clinical work, which didn't go well. I recommend this review paper to check out regarding this topic. Okay, let's start with the thromboembolism, which is not uncommon. In our experience, the event was observed in 1.5% of uh, unnuptured aneurysm embolizations in our institution, and half of them became symptomatic. Fortunately, most of the cases showed a good clinical outcome in the long run. This is a good example of procedure-related thrombosis showing intraprocedural acute platelet aggregates during the stent-assisted coiling of the aneurysms. We could identify the problem on the control roadmap during the filling phase of the embolization. C. The growing speed of this filling defect on the follow-up angiography, and we just started to infuse the tirofibin, and uh, the filling defect go away rapidly like this. This is our current protocol for this kind of situation. We ask uh, blood sampling for verify now P2Y12 assay right before infusion of the tirofibin, and uh, we uh, usually infuse the uh, tirofibin through intravenous route by calculating the dosage with 50 to 75 percent of the patient weight with a full drip infusion of the initial loading dose and uh, continue maintain dosage for 24 hours. After that, we consider modification of the antiplate resume. Usually, switch the clopidogrel to presugrel. Then, how about intraprocedural hemorrhage, primarily due to perforation of the aneurysm? I think this is the most critical problem in the embolization procedures. According to our previous data, it was about 1.2% in various lesions. It was primarily due to coil loop perforation or coil mass distension of the aneurysm. Fortunately, there were no fatality, even though several cases became symptomatic neurologically. However, most of them showed relatively good outcome in the long run. Even though the incidence is less, we are still experiencing this kind of perforation. This is one of the recent cases. An anterior communicating artery aneurysm was planned to be embolized with stent assistance. Please note that the main axis of this aneurysm was uh, vertical, perpendicular to the main axis of the, the parent artery, which is the ACAA1 here. We did the stenting and uh, tried to place the microcast tip at the middle of the orifice of the aneurysm, but because of the configuration of that aneurysm and the um, parent artery, it was a little bit difficult uh, to place a good position, but uh, we started to put the coil embolization from this point, which is a little bit posterior aspect of the aneurysm now. 
The frame was not bad and the filling phase went relatively well. However, during insertion of the, the false coil, suddenly the tip of the loop went out of the aneurysm sac. At first, we thought it could be the anterior communicating artery of the uh, opposite side or ACA. However, the configuration is uh, suspicious of uh, extravasation of the coil loop. So we checked the roadmap and uh, we found uh, leakage of the contrast media uh, like this. Fortunately, the patient didn't show any other signs of active bleeding other than this contrast extravasation. Now, how to manage this situation then? Before discussing the bailout scheme, I'd like to emphasize the importance of pre-procedure preparedness for this kind of bad situation. If you are a golfer, you have heard of the usefulness of the image training in improving your actual skill. In the same manner, you can do a kind of image training even though you haven't had the prior experience of this kind of a dire situation. If you can do it with your team, the effect would be significant in the seamless control of this kind of an easy situation. Then how to manage it? The most critical point is early recognition of the situation. As we note in this case, we should be alert when there are any unusual device movements especially when there is no other signs of androgen perforation, such as headaches or change in vital signs. If it's under general anesthesia, change in the bispectral index should also not be ignored. If you are suspicious of a perforation, ask to reverse the heparinization and concentrate on keeping your coiling to secure the rupture point. When the patient shows signs of significant active bleeding, we'd better insert and pack the coil, even in case of extravascular loop location. You can see coil still goes out of the aneurysm sac like this. If there's active bleeding, then we'd better keep coiling from that point. But in this case, we didn't do like that because there's no other signs of active bleeding. So we just uh, pulled out the microcast a little bit and uh, started to pack the coil like this. And it, that was quite effective. We were kind of a fortunate situation. So secure occlusion of aneurysm. So we kept filling of the aneurysm sac with the successive coiling. So in this case, we were kind of lucky situation, but how about this kind of situation? What if the microcast tip position is not suitable for further coil packing? The best option is balloon damping of the bleeding. If the procedure was done under balloon remodeling technique, however, I don't recommend using a balloon if the balloon caster was not in the artery already because additional insertion of that balloon caster could be impossible because of the incompatibility of the prior microcaster and this additional balloon caster through the usual six French guiding caster. If further coiling is not effective, then ask the assistant to prepare another microcaster for further packing. If the situation seems serious, then additional preparation of balloon caster would be plausible. If the additional microcaster access also seems difficult, then remove all those microcasters and insert the prepared balloon for damping. While that balloon caster secures further bleeding, then the operator can have enough time to prepare a suitable microcaster shaping. The final goal, anyway, is continuous coiling and the packing the bleeding aneurysm sac. Okay, 
That was my recommendation to bait out the perforation event. During our embolization procedures, whether you are experienced or not, leakage could happen unexpectedly. However, we must believe that most of situation can be managed only if you maintain your composure. Image training with your team would be very beneficial. Other than these two serious complications, there could be more like a premature detachment of the coil, stretching of the coil loops with or without entanglement. Among them, let me tell you more about device migration and the herniation issues. Herniation of the detached coils. The term bait out is used in this situation a lot. Bait out stenting can solve most of the cases, whether the stent can recover the herniated uh, coil loop simply by placing the therapy expanding stent and completely cover like this, or sometimes the herniated coil loop cannot be recovered. However, just the fixing the loop is enough. However, simple stenting would not be enough in case of herniated coil mass. Cases with this kind of significant mass effect compromising the branch vessel, sometimes it is difficult to navigate through this occluded, uh, narrow branch vessel. In that case, use of low-profile microcaster, such as a Prowler Thin microcaster, which still had enough ID for the delivery of the low-profile stent, can be very effectively applied. Sometimes we need to double stenting to overcome that problem of the dense mass effect of the herniated coil mass. Then how about a migrated coil loops? We must know that the extruded coil would easily be migrated this way again due to the flow. Manipulation of the coil easily triggers further distal migration, depriving the chance of successful retrieval of that migrated coil. Then how to bail out? You may think of a micro snare, a stand, or a stand river. Any method can be applied, but don't forget, we may not have enough chance to use them repeatedly. See this case. We did the embolization of this ACA proximal A1 aneurysm. At first, this procedure seemed quite satisfactory. After completion finishing coiling, we tried to remove the delivery microcast like this. When we remove it, the final coil itself migrated like this. See how fast the migration occur. So we put a guide wire like this and uh, try to put the 21 microcaster for delivery of the micro snare. We did the snaring So, deploy the snare like this. At first, it seemed the, the snare caught the coil loop. So, we tried to capture it, but it just ended up with the further distal migration of this coil loop. As you have seen here, use of a micro snare. Sometimes it's very hard to grab the coil with the snare. It requires a 21 microcaster and uh, it really is not that easy to use. So I recommend this method only for the cases with a high volume coil that might result in a significant embolization problem if we fail in the removal of the coil. For the improvement of retrieval success, I want to introduce you to a method called Guide Wire Assisted Snaring Method. Let me show you an example of what exactly is the technique. Uh, you can see the honey loop like this, 
And the first thing we need to do is leave the working microcast in place, not remove it, and insert another 21 microcast, which is for the delivery of the micro snare. Open the micro snare beyond the coil mass, and uh, through the initial working microcast using a micro guide wire, poke this coil loop and uh, poke again the snail loop with that micro guide wire. And grab the micro guide wire tip segment with the snare and remove all the microcaster and casters all together. See this video clip, which is condensed. Put the 21 microcaster, deliver the micro snare like this, and uh, open the snare here. And using the guide wire, poke the loop and uh, remove all together. So what is important is using the micro guide wire, poke this honeyed loop and uh, micro snare loop together. And using this micro snail loop, we can catch all the wire and uh, honeyated coil all together to remove it. Contrary to our expectations, retrieving the migrated coil is quite challenging in most of the cases. So, fixing the coil simply by placing a low-profile self-expanding stand would be the most effective and safe solution, especially when the coil has a small volume. If retrieval and the stenting didn't go well, consider packing the coil in the peripheral, less eloquent cortical artery like this. This is the case uh, where migrated coil flow distally. So I intentionally push the migrated coil loop far distal, less eloquent cortical uh, artery level. So it left no significant flow abnormality on control angiography. How about a side branch compromise due to the packed coil in the sac? What if a critical branch, such as the anterior choroidal artery, is not filling after the detachment of the finished coil? Then we can try to displace the already packed loops in the sac by manipulating a microcast tip within the sac. If it is not working, then can we remove the coil already detached in the sac? This is a case of uh, ICA anterior choroidal artery origin aneurysm. Actually, the configuration was not that bad, and uh, we did it with the uh, double microcast uh, technique without difficulty. Until we see non feeling of this anterior corridor artery branch on control angiography, we remove the final finish coil. Still, the anterior corridor artery is not filling. So the coil loop was like that. Can we remove it? We decide to remove the whole coil mass in the sac by using the technique we coined the thread and catch technique. As this schema shows through the working microcaster, uh, we can poke the loop of the already detached coil loop like this. And um, using the micro snare, we catch the micro guide wire loop here. And with this, we can retrieve the whole coil mass like this. These are some bailout tips uh, from me to overcome various troubled situations in the coiling of the cerebral aneurysms. These are my final words to share. We do have inadvertent technical problems during embolization of the aneurysms. Early recognition of the problem is essential. We can mitigate the consequences if we manage the situation according to the scheme set up by image training with your team. And if you stay calm and maintain your composure. Thank you for your listening.